Hello and welcome to Analyzing Finance with Nick. And in this video, I'm going to be commenting on Frank Amadeo and his concept of capital genesis. For those of you who do not know of the obscure figure of Frank Amadeo, I always referred to him by a commenter on this channel. And his story is in a fascinating book called It's Insanity, The Bizarre Story of a Bipolar Megalomaniac's Insane Plan for Total World Domination by Matthew B. Cox. And it's about this lawyer who is very gifted, but is also very emotionally unstable. And he plans on using mergers and acquisitions and corporate workarounds in the legal system to finance a military to take over the world. Um, he had started a private security firm as one of his many companies and almost succeeded in a coup in both the Democratic Republic of the Congo and Tajikistan. However, he broke really the first rule of Fight Club when it comes to supervillains, and that is that he told everybody about his plan for world domination. And he did that in front of a bunch of NATO dignitaries in Riga, Latvia. And that is not really what he should have been doing. And so as a result, the authorities got on to him and they arrested him for tax fraud because he failed to pay two over um, two hundred million dollars worth of payroll taxes. He didn't spend the money on his own lifestyle. He was saving it to buy things such as fighter jets and military-grade weapons he would need for his plan for world domination. And then he did this all out of his home in Orlando. In fact, he had most of his top-secret meetings with spies and state officials and others inside the parks of the Magic Kingdom in Epcot. It, it, this, could, this would make a great movie. Frank Amadeo, a lawyer, businessman, and sneaky bipolar individual who was planning on taking over the world from the Magic Kingdom of Disney World. <laughs> In fact, I could imagine him changing the, the national anthem of the world to Rock Me Amadeus, except Amadeo. <laughs> I mean, and he, he kind of got close. And even while he was in prison, he used his his clever business savvy and legal savvy to lower the sentences of many white-collar criminals who were stationed in his low-security prison. Uh, but the question, really, that I got asked about this is this economic model that he would have used called capital genesis to create a new economy and self-finance his plan of world domination and this is basically how it works he acquires a company out of bankruptcy and he uses the the company to become the customer and or the supplier to other companies in his portfolio and so in order for all the companies to be financially in better position he has all of them use each other's services to propel each of their businesses and maintain customers and on top of that he has he took all of the proceeds from his payroll tax consulting company which he used to, to manage the payroll of all the companies and that's how he was able to collect all that unpaid payroll tax because he owned the payroll manager and used that, that to to because that's kind of the start and so therefore the payroll management company would need to use whatever companies that are used to supply the needs of the payroll management company in this portfolio and become customers of them and in theory, he sh if you kept doing this and acquiring more and using the proceeds from all these intra-party, related party transactions, you'd be able to buy more companies, create a bigger micro-economy under your umbrella 
to all transactors themselves and the revenue generated from that will keep growing and be used to acquire more other companies or outright nations until you rule the world. It sounds great in theory if you ignore the main problem of this, which is that you need still capital from elsewhere to keep the whole run going. Just because you have a bunch of businesses buying from themselves, every buyer is a seller from some other point. So the amount of money actually shuffling through this web of companies within Amadeus conglomerate is a wash. There's no net additional growth. You can't grow from buying from yourself. And I guess you could do in theory is you get the money from investors to finance the growth, but you still need to generate some sort of profit and create real value from selling to customers outside of your pool. Uh, the um, uh, So that's why this doesn't work. You can't create a perpetual motion machine just by buying goods from yourself. Let's look at an example. Say like if you have five sisters and five brothers, there's 11 of you in this family, and each of you has a different business and you each have a thousand dollars to spend. One of them makes shoes, one of them makes clothes, one of them makes cars, one of them sells real estate, one of them fixes everything that you buy from the others and one makes video games and you provide legal services. And so if you guys all use your money to pay each other services, how much profit does the family make on the net? Zero, because you're all just buying from yourself. What Amadeo could do in theory to make this work is you bring in money to grow the system by force. This is what's called a plunder economy. It's where you have an otherwise stable economy, but you gain growth from taking wealth from other parts of the world through conquest and flowing that new wealth into the existing economy, which results in more profits for the participants in that economy. This is how the ancient Roman economy worked. Rome's economy didn't really grow very much, if at all, during the entire period of the Roman Empire. It was mostly just trading amongst the Mediterranean regions of the world amongst themselves. Rome would buy food from Egypt, and Egypt would use the money it made from buying food to buy weapons and manufactured goods from Rome, and then and if you had so those types of transactions for every other good in the economy, like maybe Greece sold olive oil, Spain sold leather, etc. And it was just like a bunch of, again, like a bunch of siblings passing each other money. It's not like they increased output because Rome didn't really innovate new industrial scale ways to produce things or create new products or really create new markets. They just increased trade amongst themselves. And in order to have some sort of growth is that you would take land from somewhere else and use the, the gains and spoils from war to flow into the economy and add to the supply, kind of what Amadeo did, which was by acquiring more bankrupted companies to be more customers for the arm's length transaction. It gives you a one boost, but it's not a perpetual source of growth because it's not a stable new gain in productivity or innovation or a new source of outside capital that is recurring. It's just a one-time boost. And this is the same thing that happened with ancient Rome and the plunder economy. And when Rome stopped conquering, its economy stopped growing because it only grew by increasing the volume and the gains from other parts of the world. It didn't grow and so there's no total for, for factor productivity growth really at all. And that's why once Rome stopped conquering, the empire's economy collapsed. 
because there was nothing to fuel growth. And since there was no growth and the government had to spend more to cover debts from the wars and the mismanagement of the empire under some bad emperors, the whole system collapsed upon itself. And so that is why the Roman Empire fell. It was a plunder economy. Once they stopped plundering, it was dead. And with Amadeo, he basically tried to create a plunder economy, but he didn't have anything to plunder. And so it was, I guess he was either, he thought his plan would have been just to conquer random parts of the world and force the citizens of those countries to buy the products of his companies and then use the new assets from the conquered lands as new companies in his capital genesis pool. But the whole problem is there's no new wealth being created. All you're doing is plundering, whether through acquisitions in the business world or war, to take more assets and add it to your pool. It's like if you have, a, again, all the siblings, like if your parents have another kid um, and there's no new money being added, that's the same thing that's going on here. So it's not really some secret genius way of innovating. It's really just painting a modern finance coat of lipstick on the pig of a classic ancient plunder economy. Thanks for watching.